I mean, the Swedish economy is in good shape, but you have this recession that we meet now. It's because, of course, the Swedish households are quite in debt. Um, adjustable rates is the most common, uh, it's very common for Swedish households. So when, you know, the interest rate got up, the consumers really held back. And also we see, of course, the investment in, in construction is, is, is very low. So we'll see this year and a bit in next year will be in a mild re recession, but then we will turn up again. As you talk about the pressure on households, yeah. last year the Riksbank was sounding more hawkish than others as it tried to shield the battered currency. And this year we have witnessed even more greenback resilience as we talk about potential policy divergence. How concerned are you about the, the weakness in your currency? Uh, I mean, that is troubling, of course. And, uh, but I think it will get stronger uh, because it's, I think it's underestimated. Uh, and it will get stronger. But, you know, Sweden have own currency, not very big economy. So it's a bit, I mean, it's a bit shaky. And um, so I'm not that surprised, but I'm surprised that it has been so weak for, for a bit too long. Policy actions to the upside by central banks have been slow to, to take hold. But when we talk about Sweden and a very different makeup here and a lot of households having variable mortgages, does that mean that when the rate cuts uh, gather pace, that the relief comes much quicker? To the Swedish economy. Yeah, I, our, I, what we see, we see we will be in a, a recession this year and next year. But uh, I, I think it's, you're on to something because it's also like hopeful now because the inflation is, has really come down. When I got this job 18 months ago, it was my first priority to keep have restrained the budget, even though we had a bad recession, restrained the budget to get the inflation down. And now when we see that, and the the Riks Bank, the central bank, is, is also saying we will. Yeah, you know, we will take the, the rates down. That's, people feel a bit spring feeling. I, I've said we have, we have had an economic winter, but now we are turning to more of a, a spring. Inflation is at 2.2% in the latest metrics in March. How far along the road do you think you are in terms of battling inflation? I think I usually say we, we're not on the final round, but, but very close. Uh, but we know we can now in, in the Middle East, we can... I mean, the oil prices, the, the, the shipping costs and so on, can, I mean, it can be like uh, troubling when it comes to the supply side. So, um, and we keep our eyes on that, of course, but I, I'm quite confident that we really have uh, won the, the battle of inflation. Let me just get a little bit more detail on that because the events over the weekend, Iran's direct attack on Israel no longer using proxies. To some Middle East watchers, that is a, a scary turn of events. Markets didn't necessarily react the same way, but there's still potential that that could happen. What would the worst case scenario be for you around the Middle East? I mean, the worst case is that this is continuing, of course. I mean, that, that, that's about human suffering, first of all. But when it comes to economy, of course, uh, this can be really problematic. I mean, we have Ukraine. It has affected Russians, Russia's war in and, and Ukraine and, and uh, against Ukraine has affected the economy very much. And this can do too. So we have to be calm, of course, when it comes to, to um, what, what kind of fiscal policy we need uh, farther along, along the road. But right now, if it doesn't get too... Uh, the conflict doesn't get bigger, I think um, we can be quite sure that we will have a better economy uh, coming years. The war in Ukraine continues and again yeah. more calls and more needs that need to be met on funding. Mm. And we've seen it uh, expressed through the United States with difficulty in finding enough political support in Europe. Some member nations too are pushing back against accession for, for Ukraine, imports of farm goods from the country. When it comes to the support in Europe, how would you describe it? Do you think it's waning? I actually, when I'm here, I see it as my absolute most important task to talk about Ukraine because I mean, we're not doing that just for Ukraine. We're doing it for Europe, and we're doing it for, of course, for Sweden. I mean, because um, Putin and Russians, they are not, they are not, um, they can go on for a long time, and it can, it can be much wider this war so and I, I'm worried that some European countries and also around the world is getting a bit more hesitant when it comes to, to support and that makes me um, it makes me sad but also determined to to convince them we have to keep on support Ukraine because if they lose we all lose 
if they start to lose, if the optics start to change here, what does that do for investor sentiment in Europe? I mean, I mean, we have, first of all, what I think, first of all, if they, they can't lose. We can't, uh, we, we must help Ukraine so they, so they don't lose. So that's not really on my mind, because, I mean, if Russia wins here, we will have much trouble years ahead. So, no, uh, they will not win. Can I ask you about Sweden's accession to NATO and how that's yeah. changed? I mean, from a previously neutral stance, what's been the impact at home and changing thinking, changing investment in certain industries? What have the consequences been? Pretty quickly. I mean, we were, some of our parties have been pro-NATO for many years, but then the, the, one of the biggest, bigger parties was negative. But then came uh, Russia's war in, in Ukraine. So from that point, things shifted very quickly, especially since Finland also shifted and, and we wanted to go the whole uh, road together of course. So now we have like a very very broad majority in the Swedish parliament for a NATO membership and Swedes are very pro now because we all realize this is coming very close, we can't stand all on our own, we have to do this together with others and I'm very proud that as a Minister of Finance we have a bit over 2% of when it comes to the NATO standard of, of uh, GDP. So we are growing our defense uh, together with others and um, it's, it's a good opinion, yeah.